Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now that we have spoken about angular velocity and acceleration, it is time to introduce a new quantity related to rotation of objects that is known as torque. So let us see what is a torque. So torque is nothing but the rotational analog of force. So basically, I mean, now I guess you have got the flow of the lesson. So what are we actually trying to do in this lesson? We are trying to study a system of particles or a rigid body where you have, uh, where we do not consider a body as a single particle. We, will cons we are considering the body as a system of particles. At the same time, we are considering the rotational motion of that body. Till now we, I mean in all our previous lessons, the initial lessons, we spoke about the uh, linear motion in one plane, motion in um, motion in three dimensions and all those steps, right? But there we never considered the rotational motion of an object. So here whatever we are talking about is analogous to the linear motion. So like how we have angular velocity which was a rotation, uh, rotational analog of linear velocity. We have angular acceleration which is again a rotational analog of linear acceleration. Similarly we have torque which is a rotational analog of force. The way we have force in case of linear motion here we will have torque in case of rotational motion. It is also known as moment of force. So torque is also called as moment of force. It is denoted by the letter, the Greek letter tau. Well, to understand torque, let us take this example, which will help you to understand this. Let us suppose you have a rod, as you can see here, this is a rod. Let us suppose a force is applied on it from upwards, right? So what will happen? This rod will start moving down. Now you apply an equal and opposite force on the rod from downwards. So now what happens? Since equal and opposite forces are applied, therefore the net force is zero and the rod does not move. There is no movement of the rod because you are applying equal and opposite forces at the same point. Correct? Now look at this scenario. Let us suppose you have the same rod and you apply the same equal and opposite forces. But now you apply the two forces on the two ends of the rod. So what happens? If you want to try it yourself, you will see that. What happens in this case? In this case, the rod starts rotating. Correct? So what does this show? This shows that it is not that every time if you apply equal and opposite force to an object, the net force will be zero and there will be no motion. That is true only when the equal and opposite forces are applied along the same lines of force. That means they should be applied along the same lines. So in the previous example, the equal and opposite forces were applied along the same lines. Therefore, they cancelled each other. But in this case, since they are applied along different lines, therefore this force wanted this end to go down. And this force wanted this end to go up. As a result, this end went up and this end went down. And this resulted in a motion or a rotational motion in the anti-clockwise direction. Right? So this kind of force in case of rotational motion, this force, I mean, the for, this in case of linear motion, when you have some object, you have a ball, you apply some force, and the ball moves. So you see that the force is applied on the ball which caused a linear motion in it. Similarly, these kind of equal and opposite forces applied along different lines which causes the body to rotate is known as moment of force or torque. So this is known as torque. So torque is the cause of the rotation. Right? So similarly, we can also take a practical example that is the example of a door. Right? Have you ever observed that when you try to open the door, this is your door. Now, if you let us suppose if you are inside, if you want to open this door and if you apply a force at this point, in that case and push the door, it is easier to open the door. But you, if you apply a force at this point and try to open the door, are you able to open the door? No, you are not. 
So the same effect is working here also, right? Because when you are applying a force here, in that case, the net force gets compensated. But when you apply a force here, this end wants the door to move that side, that is to move outwards, whereas this end is fixed. As a result, the door is moving that side. But when we apply this force on the end which is fixed, then the door is not able to move at all. Right? So, torque plays a role in this case as well. So, it is not only the force, but how and where it is applied is important in rotational motion. Right? So, it is not only that you apply a force and the body will start rotating, but you have to apply the force in the correct place to have to get the correct rotation of that object. So, now let us look at a mathematical expression for torque. So torque is defined as the cross product of, torque is a vector quantity and it is defined as the cross product of the radius vector and the force. So torque is defined as the cross product of radius vector and force. So how do we define it? So A cross B is equal to AB sin theta. Similarly, R cross F is R F sin theta, where R is the position vector of the point on which the force is applied. F is the magnitude of the force and theta is the angle between R and F. So in very similar to how we find out the direction of A cross B, similarly we can find out the direction of torque. So the direction of torque should be such that it is perpendicular to R, it is also perpendicular to F. That is torque should be in a direction perpendicular to the plane containing R and F. Right? Now torque is a vector quantity because it is defined not only by uh, magnitude but also by direction. SI unit is Newton meter because it is given by the product of the position vector R and force and the unit for force is Newton and the unit for R that is the position vector is meter. Therefore, the SI unit for torque is Newton meter. Dimension for torque is ML to the power 2, T to the power minus 2 that, that again comes from here because torque is equal to given by force multiplied by the position vector. Now for force it is nothing but mass into acceleration and this is radius vector. So mass is m, acceleration is lt to the power minus 2 and r is again l. So this becomes ml to the power 2t to the power minus 2. So this is how we get the dimension for torque. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.